think Mai's on already. Mai is on. Yeah, Mai is on. Sorry, due to a.
if not slightly chilly, Sunday morning. And if you are a regular member of our congregation or you've been tuning in to us on Sunday mornings, you'll notice that we're not your normal faces that you would see. And this couch isn't normally here. And we're in a slightly different area of the church building. And that is because it's the third Sunday of the month. And before COVID, we did a cafe church every third Sunday of the month. And we would like to bring a bit of that element back into our monthly services. Um, for those of you that don't know who we are, I'm Sherry, and this is Sergio. And Hi. we're married, hence why we're so close to each other. And we are the new children, youth, and family workers here at St. James. Um, so this is kind of what your third Sundays are going to be like, a little bit more of a relaxed atmosphere. Um, and we'll have various different things going on throughout the service. So today we have an interview with Ian and Hannah. Um, we have Chris talking on lockdown, hashtag three. Um, and a little bit from us about what we've been doing these last couple of months. So, I hope you got your coffee with you and your tea and biscuits. We don't have biscuits today, but next month we will, I promise. Um, and so shall we start with a prayer and then we're going straight to a song. Uh, so let's just be quiet for a moment and, and be in the presence of God and enjoy this moment. So, Father, thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives. Thank you for, for the fact that you're still at work. While a lot of places are closed, you're still working. So I pray that you can still work today in the life of every single person watching. I pray that your blessing in every single home. I pray that you can bless us as a church to keep doing your work in here, Father. We pray for our community, for our village in Breen. We pray that you can bless every single home. Thank you, Jesus, because your sacrifice at the cross gives us hope. It gives us something to look ahead. Despite what every doctor says, despite what the PM says, we can just focus on you and know that we have a future. So in the name of Jesus, Father, bless us today. I pray that you can prepare the hearts and the, the ears and the mind of everybody who is listening today. So in the name of Jesus, amen. So we're going for a song now. Let's sing forever of God's forever love. Your river flows with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing Oh, when your love came down, yeah And the seas, your river flows with love for me, and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I would daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of oh, when your love came down. Yeah, I could sing of your love forever, I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever Knew I feel like dancing It's foolishness I know When the world has seen the light They will dance with joy Like I'm dancing I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever 
forever. So hello, yeah. hello, we got Ian and Hannah, and we, you're going to be talking a little bit today about fostering with them. So if anybody from the church don't know yet, they start fostering. I don't know when they started, so I'm going to be asking that to them in a minute. Uh, and we're going to just chat about um, if anybody from the church has seen a film called Instant and Family. I highly recommend it. Uh, we watched it another day and, and it was quite, you know, Shari cried a lot. I didn't. I just stay very firm with my position. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to be chatting about all those things. Uh, so first of all, uh, how did you guys came to that decision to foster? Well, I think um, it's something we've thought thought about for a long time, probably before having our own children, that ultimately one day we might think about fostering or, or adoption. Um, so my parents were foster carers. They started after I left home and went off to university, um, but and they just recently stopped being foster carers. So that, that was kind of probably the instigator. And then, and it's just one of those things though, that I think once you've had your own children, sort of easy to keep, to kind of put off and think, well, one day, one day we'll do it. Um, but I think we felt that like we had quite a few nudges the last year or so um, from above, like it just kept cropping up in conversation. Um, and then we went to New Wine a couple of years ago and mm. Ian will tell you about that. Yeah, I mean, so uh, just before then, um, I'd, I'd met up with a guy who um, uh, who recommended uh, a book, Home for Good, which is by a guy called Krish Kandaya, uh, who I'd, I'd kind of met a couple of times when I was doing student work. So so we read that and that um, talks about, I guess, yeah, uh, an opportunity for, for Christians particularly to be involved in, in fostering and adoption. So that was really challenging. Um, I met a guy who I used to used to work with who was uh, they were fostering um, uh, a, a lad from Afghanistan. Um, and there was all these little things happening. And then at New Wine, um, went to a seminar and just sat next to this woman. I think the seminar was about justice. Um, and it turned out her and her husband were, were just kind of starting the journey. Uh, and Hannah and I met up with them. And it, it just seemed like in a whole range of different ways, God was kind of prompting us really. Um, in a way, you know, we weren't. I guess we were quite maybe because of Hannah's parents 
who were an incredible example to us and an inspiration. Um, but equally, we knew that it would be difficult. Uh, so we didn't, you know, I suppose, uh, didn't think it would all be uh, remarkably easy. Um, and so because of that, there was part of us that, you know, that was sort of thinking, do we really want to, you know, go this route? Um, but the kids actually were quite, you know, we talked to them a lot about it, the two girls, and um, and there was one, I can't remember which one of, one of them it was, but at one point, you know, because we were going through the kind of the, you know, potential challenges. Uh, one of them just said, well, we're talking about all the, you know, the potential challenges, but what about the, you know, the difference it could make to, you know, to someone's life if we're able to, to kind of share our home with them. So uh, that was really a key part to kind of moving us forward to uh, begin the selection process. Mm. Like how 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 long are you guys fostering now? For how long? When did you guys start it? Very long. Not very long. Yeah, just in July and and at the moment, so last July, um, and at the moment we're just doing uh, respite care. So we uh, we have a little girl come to stay with us uh, every few weeks, so roughly once a month, uh, for kind of a, a weekend. Uh, we saw her over Christmas uh, and so on, and this is essentially giving her uh, carers uh, a break, really. Uh, so she comes comes and stays with us for a bit and she's lovely i have to say you know in a way uh i kind of you know feel like yeah it's it's, it's a lot so far anyway it's a lot uh, a lot less challenging than perhaps we thought it would be and at the moment yeah it's only once you know once a month kind of thing i don't i didn't really we didn't think about respite to start with so um in the lead up there's just quite a lot of terror for me thinking mm. how on earth are we going to do this but i think we're supposed to do so we have to kind of uh, and someone I was chatting to someone in church actually and they they were really helpful because they just said you know just just do one step at a time and that's how God works as well and mm -hmm. that's really true isn't it you know you, you know if you're pushing a door and it opens go through it but you don't have to imagine what's going to happen right the way right. down the corridor and and it definitely feels like God's grace that you know we, we started out doing it in this way that feels really manageable for us where we're at as a family mm -hmm. right now so yeah but did, did you ask about the process, Sherry? Because I can't, can't hear you very well. <laughs> the process, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it was, it, yeah, it was quite quite interesting, I think. The, the, so to start with, after you express an interest, then you get um, a social worker who comes just to assess, an assessing social worker. So, so we had um, this guy who come around, was it once a month? Once a week for a while. Always yeah. once a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was once a week to start with. Seemed, which seemed like quite a lot. And you, we sat around our kitchen table, and you just basically talk about, you know, your history, your how you, your experience of growing up, all your family connections. Like it really digs deep. Mm. It's a little bit like if if you guys have done marriage prep, people in church might have done, you know, more likely to have done a marriage prep thing. It's a bit like that, really, where you revi revisit a lot. Mm. So that was quite, in some ways hard, but in some ways quite good to, um, yeah, almost like a sort of bit of therapy in a way, talking about challenges in life and, you know, the positives. Um, yeah, and it was encouraging as well, because I think it made us feel like we're, we're on the same page. The, the girls felt like they were on the, you know, the, the similar page, although we had no idea what, you know, what, what we were letting ourselves in for it. It was helpful. Yeah, and then ultimately you kind of you go before a panel and uh, a number of really lovely people actually, but just ask you, you know, ask you questions. And we we go through uh, various bits of training, um, uh, which is all yeah, pretty you know, pretty helpful stuff. Um, and then this panel is where they how long the training uh, overall. That, yeah, well, the, the from the day they, sorry, yeah, from the day that you express some interest to the day that the girl came through your door, how how long was it? time frame do you have an idea uh so probably about nine months roughly right. nine months yeah. yeah quite i mean quite long um there were some delays you know along the way um so yeah i mean it's it's not a it's not a quick thing um but in a way that actually really helps because it just you gradually you know adjust uh you know your thinking and you, you prepare um, and as Hannah said that you know that the time we spent with this social worker it was you know it was quite you know really fascinating actually the sort of stuff you you know, talk about and particularly thinking back to the way we've been parented 
uh, and you know the kind of the things we've we've learned from our parents, uh, the way we parent, the way we deal with conflict, you know, all this kind of stuff, and potentially how how it's different uh, caring for a looked after child versus you know your own child, and because there are some key things that you have to do differently, um, and it's it's all that kind of stuff. But. So, is there anything that you've learned about yourselves that really stood out to you? Oh, that's a good question ourselves. Go on, let's yeah. go first. Um, I guess uh, well I, 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 don't, I mean I guess uh, in a way the sort of thing that I learn I've learned at each point where I've done something a little bit uh, different where you kind of learn a bit more about your own my own selfishness and you kind of <laughs> you sort of think oh in theory this is a great thing and then uh you sort of start to worry about how it's going to impact you know me and my comfort so I guess and, and in a way it's the same you know having your own children you sort of suddenly think hang on a minute I'm not going to be able to do what I want whenever I want uh so it's similar kind of things I guess about about that um on the flip side as well, though, I think, you know, I, I sometimes feel on the weekends where where she's coming and quite often, you know, the weeks, especially at the minute, it's a bit of a weird time for everyone, isn't it? So you can feel a bit more tired and a bit more kind of, well, how, how are we going to do it? Um, but actually, I think you forget the energy that, that a new sort of young little person coming in can bring. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, how actually I forget how you, I, I personally can really feed on that and and yeah sort of rise to it but I, I think um I've I've probably learned a bit more about how much I need to remember to rely on God as well because you know he's it's just that sense of you know he's really in it and there are moments where I I think more than any other time where I felt like I pushed against what I thought God wanted and it's like oh, I can't I can't do it um so yeah it's been a really big learning curve and actually just do it stepping out <laughs> giving it a go and mm. yeah and how how was the excitement of the first day if i can put it in a way uh like were you guys nervous were you guys just chilled and everything's under control and how, mm. how was the girls as well yeah, I think we were all a little little bit nervous. Um, but again, I think, you know, we went to pick pick her up, all four of us in the car, um, and she's quite chatty and, you know, and we all just started mm. talking. And I think, yes, it, it was more natural in that way. I, I guess sometimes, you know, we're so early on in the process, it, it, you could have a child coming through your yeah, who was very, very withdrawn and quiet, and mm -hmm. and that would probably be more challenging. Um, so it, we very quickly sort of relaxed into it because she seems quite a good fit with our family in a way. And yeah, we just we yeah, it's not quiet <laughs> at all when she's when she's with us. <laughs> no. and and I, was, I guess yeah, go on. Sorry, I, I you know I guess I was a bit nervous. Um, partly because of what we've been told to expect. Mm. Uh, and so I, I sort of thought beforehand, I, I kind of wondered if I'd, if I'd sleep actually, or whether I'd sort of, you know, be sort of feeling like I need to, you know, stay up all night just in case something <laughs> crazy happens. Uh, but, um, but actually, uh, yeah, as I say, thing, things were a lot less challenging than we uh, were told they might be. So, um, so actually it was, it was, a lot easier than we thought. Mm. And is is there any way that like we as a church could I don't know help you guys pray for you guys or any practical way as well? We they have, maybe you, you need some I don't know some trampoline installed in your garden maybe. Anyway, is there anything that we can support you in any way, shape, or form? funny you say about the trampoline because uh we've we've actually got one and uh and she loves it she's always on the, she's always on that so <laughs> we're all um, exhausted because we have to jump on the trampoline uh, yeah. um yeah uh, i think um, yeah get pro eyes i guess for guidance moving forward because um our social worker is constantly saying are you ready for for someone coming 
you know on other weekends or you know ready for long term and at some point we we will be but we want it to be the right time um uh yeah and just for us to continue to bond with the, the little girl that we're, we're already spending time with I think um and and for the for our girls because they're both um they've got quite a lot of work you know they're both teenagers and they've got quite a lot of work um school work and things to focus on so the more uh committed I suppose we are to, to the fostering the more maybe challenging it could could be for them so and pray for this little girl we yeah we can't really tell you her name but um she's eight and she's um I mean as I say she's she's lovely she uh yeah, she really brings something to, to our family. Um, but uh, yeah, just pray that things, you know, continue to, to go well for her uh, in yeah. her in her setting, in her, you know, the challenges that she's had mm. in, the, in the beginning of her life. Cool. Thanks for talking to us. Like, like I said, Chad and I, another day, we watch it, uh, Instant and Family, and it's all about fostering. Uh, I don't know if, you, if yeah, so uh, it's literally, it, we finished the film in, we caught ourselves looking into like Home for Good was one of the websites as well that we, we are looking. Um, anyway, we are just like exploring perhaps the possibility for the future. And and it's, it's just so good to yeah. hear from you guys that are, are living on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, your, your family would be great. Your children may be a little bit. <laughs> yeah, You've got yeah. your hands full, but yeah, mm. one day. In the future. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thank you so much, guys. Enjoy your Sunday and, and have a great week. God yes. bless you. you. Bye. 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 So, yeah, thanks, Ian and Hannah, for that. Um, I, I, I don't know about you, but we personally, we find that subject fantastic and, and we are very interested in, in know more about their journey. So if you, if you are also interested, just have a chat with them. I'm pretty sure that they're going to be very happy to talk to you. So I feel like we should just pray for you and Hannah now. And then we're going to have another chat with Chris. So, so let's just pray for you and Hannah. Yeah? So Father, thank you for, for you and Hannah. Thank you that they put themselves in that position where they can bless someone else, bless another life. Um, so I just pray your blessing over them, over their household, and over this little girl, Father. I pray that that they can really be changed, Father, by, by taking someone into their house and help them to develop and help them to, to grow in life. Uh, so bless them this time and please provide for everything that they needed. Um, give them enough patience and, and love and, and compassion to do this job um, as such, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you and Hannah and we bless them now. Amen. reducing food wastage. So it's said that on average 470 pounds worth of food is wasted every year per household, um, which is a lot of food wasted a year. Um, and the community fridge organizers um, have estimated that 4.1 million tons of that food wastage can be saved each year. Um, and that's why they went ahead and set up these community fridges and they are open across the UK um, and we basically, we go to supermarkets at the end of the day, we collect their surplus items, so it's anything that they can no longer sell. Um, it could be food that's gone past their use-by date, um, it could be damaged products or um, items that have come out of multi-packs um, and they're no longer able to sell them, so they give them to us, we put them in our community fridge and you can come and help yourself. So it is open to absolutely everybody and anybody can come and use it. Um, at the moment, we are only open 10 till 12, um, and that's due to staffing. So because of COVID, um, we will collect your items for you. So you bring your bag, tell us what you want, and we'll put it into your bag for you. 
um, that's, that's 10 to 12 every day. That yeah. is, and then if you can't uh, make every it, weekday. every weekday, yeah, yeah, Monday to Friday, um, Monday to if you Friday. can't make it in those hours, if you just give the centre a phone call, or if you go onto our Facebook page, Saints Game Free, um, and send a message, and then we can arrange a time to meet you at the centre, um, and you can come and access the fridge. Um, it also works if you, well at the moment you're not going to be going on holiday, but in the future when you go on holiday, if you have a bowl of fruit or anything that isn't going to be edible when you get back, you can bring that down to the centre and somebody else can enjoy it. Yep. Brilliant. And, and it's so just seems to be the, yeah, I don't know any, what happens, but so just seems to be the one who always gets sent to the supermarket to pick things up. Yeah. Um, I like to talk. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, um, especially now during the week, it's, it's really interesting to see how um, the salad section is just is completely abandoned. So um, I'm having to refuse uh, to take salad because uh, even though we bring it to the fridge, to the community fridge, uh, people don't take it in here either. So, but the, the salad section is something that is, that is always salad there. So if you are a salad lover like me, uh, just come and have a chat with me. I can bring some salad for you. It's not a problem. Uh, but yeah, so there is always breads, um, all type of rolls, um, some fresh products that normally when we get our fresh product, like meat or sausage or whatever, uh, we put it straight to the freezer and get frozen at that day. Uh, so you can come and have a look in our freezer as well. We say fridge, but realistically it's a community fridge and freezer. And cupboard as well, yeah. We do get some products for the cupboard, such as flour, cereal, um, biscuits, pasta. Um, pasta, yeah, some long life products. So it, it, it's great, it's a great opportunity for you to come, um, or perhaps get out of your houses for a little bit um, and just help yourself. It's, it's no questions asked, just come and fill up your bag. Christmas hampers, um, we, um, we made up, I say we, it was the entire church, um, made up Christmas hampers for 34 local families um, here in Breen, um, and we were absolutely outstanded, I think, by the amount that the mm. church donated. Um, so the church people donated items. We made up a list of what would, could go in the hampers, um, and we had a... <laughs> tick sheet that kind of didn't work all the time because no, we ticked often more than we had or we didn't tick enough of what we had but anyway um so people donated items to the campus and some people gave money um and so with that money we were able to buy any of the bits that we didn't quite have enough of and we still had money left over and so we were able to make up 34 christmas dinner hampers to go alongside the gift hampers um, for the families, and the reactions were um, very humbling. Um, it was quite an emotional journey at some point. Mm. Um, some of the emails that we received from the families um, who had accepted the offer um, were very heartfelt. Um, and when we delivered them, so we delivered some, Chris delivered some, and Barry delivered some of the hampers, um, and 
it was safe to say that the overall um, feeling was just of complete, I mean, they had no idea what they were getting in these hampers. Um, they knew the Christmas dinner hamper, but they had no idea what they were getting inside the gift hampers. And I think for most of them, they thought they were just getting maybe a box of cereal, maybe a juice or, you know, maybe some biscuits or something. They, they didn't mm. realise there was going to be toilet roll and washing powder and the rest of it. So their faces... And toothbrushes. And a lot yeah. of toothbrushes. I think every pack got a good five or six. <laughs> Children and, and adults. He is also very worth to, to say that during, during this process, we managed to build a relationship with the community champion at Tesco's Lydney, and, and it's been, she's been very helpful. Um, she donates some stuff as well. Uh, Tesco's donates stuff for the Humpers as well. Um, and she's actually looking forward to engaging in more uh, ways to facilitate and, 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 and just help the community. Uh, in general, really. Fantastic. So two minutes, message, two minutes max on Messy Church. What's going on with Messy Church? Messy Church is still happening. Messy Church is still happening. Yes. And Annie is absolutely amazing. Um, she has been our rock through Messy Church. So Messy Church is very new to us. Um, we've experienced it with our own children, but organising it and putting it together has been a different kettle of fish. And Annie is phenomenal. Um, so thank you very much, Annie. Um, and yes, it's still going on, so we do have one coming up in February. The advert will be going out this week, so if you would like a Messy Church bag, um, please do ask one, contact us through the Facebook page. Um, and yeah, so we're doing it on miracles, and this, this theme is when Jesus turns water into wine. And there is some very good activities coming up for that pack. Unfortunately, there is no wine included. Just to let and you grown ups know. Water into wine for some fun activities, I just like. The wine will be black current. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> um, but it is good. Um, yeah, so we've had a lot of really good responses to that. Um, and do send us photos. So if you receive these packs, um, we've had quite a few photos sent to us via the messenger, um, and we don't share them because it has the children's faces in them. Um, but if you would just like to take photos of the activities that you've made up and post them on our Facebook page, hashtag Messy Church. Um, that would be great because we love seeing um, what mm. you get up to. And can I also say as well, back to the community fridge, we had um, a mum come in last week um, with her son and they collected loads of fresh items, went home and her son Googled different recipes that could be made with the items that they collected. Um, they made curry, um, they made carrot cake and, oh they made something else and I can't remember. Um, but they sent photos of the creations and that was great because it's really nice to hear and see what you get up with with the ingredients um, that you take from it. Mm. Yeah, so we're gonna be uh, listening to another song now, um, another worship song. Beside you, open up. 
still need to learn things. So the church is not shut. So for us now, um, the temptation for us is to continue to think we can beat this thing uh, based on human skill and human logic and to put our trust in vaccines and the next part. And yet we know that we, only, we, we can only be sure of one thing and that's God. Um, so I say yes.
Thy great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but Thou art mighty. Hold me with Thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Want no more. Feed me till. of Jordan bid my anxious fears subside death of death and hell's destruction lead me safe to Canaan's side songs of praises songs of praises I will ever give to thee to thee I will ever give to Great, we're back now. Um, just a few notices. Um, if you are following our website and our Facebook page, uh, this Thursday, the 21st, we're going to start our Happiness Lab. Uh, it will be free and it will be on Zoom, yes. Uh, so uh, get in touch if you would like to, to take a part of it. Get in touch with our Facebook page or send us an email or give a call to the office. Uh, we still go a few places. Um, it will be great. Uh, it will be me, myself, eh? Barry and Annie will be there. Um, Barry and Annie are the facilitators. Uh, great people, happy people. So just drop us an email, a line, and, and just join us for, for the experience. We'll run for six weeks. We're going to be watching some videos uh, in specific themes, and we're going to just talk about it, see how our experience um, maybe make us happy. I don't know. I never took a part of so You're going to be in the same boat than me. Um, just quick, um, I don't know if you managed to catch everything that Chris said. Um, thank goodness I left my microphone on. And I'm pretty sure that there was a moment that I looked at Sharon and I said, um, he's, he's speaking about what I was thinking in share at the beginning of the service, and I didn't. Um, so I felt like I, I'm a share now. So I was reading the Bible in, in Deuteronomy. I don't know if I said that properly. Um, verse 31, no, chapter 31, verse 8. And it says, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you and he'll never forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So I will end the service with this verse for you. I hope you have a fantastic week and be in touch if you want to know anything else about the community village, happiness lab, um, just be in touch. So I'll just close now with a quick prayer and I'll send us off. So Father, thank you for today. Thank you that your word is alive today. So I pray that you can bless us throughout the week, protect us, um, help us to follow the guidelines and understand them better as well. So in the name of Jesus, Father, bless every single person that is watching now and those who will catch up later. In the name of Jesus, amen. Have a great Sunday.